So from 2022 to 2023, we would see some new Silver Falls games come to both the 3DS and the Wii U shops retrospectively. Guardians of Metal Exterminators is one of those games that came out for the new 3DS exclusive, as it was dubbed as the best-selling game on the system for its time. So, in terms of like the game itself, it would get itself a remaster version, most recently on Nintendo Switch, Guardians and Metal Exterminators S. Now, it's a Switch exclusive title in which it's the same game, but there are some major differences. Graphically, the game has overall improved on its visuals. The frame rate has significantly improved, so that means there won't be any more choppy frame rates whenever time you play the game. It's expanded its roster in terms of playable characters of humans and monsters. And some brand new music has been added to the game, and twice the story has been added into the game. So, not only this is a remastered version of the original game itself, but it's also an expanded version. Code Linker is still there, which you'll just have to use your same Code Linker stuff in order to unlock your previously unlocked characters if you've already done that with the 3DS version. But I will say that the Switch version has improved gameplay. And just like these original counterparts, it does come with this Tiger games, which I've already talked about. In which, they're just two Tiger games you guys, guys can just play whenever you want. So like, one of them is like you're using a shield to attack enemies, and the other one you're shooting and dodging. So that's basically more about it. I've already talked about the improvements in this one. So what's new also is that... It shows enemy levels before you head out to your quests. That's such a huge improvement, so you know like, hey, you're level this, you're level that, and then you're, you see the enemies that are level this. Now, I may have already talked about the stories in terms of like humans and monsters, but monsters, there was no story, but there's always been people talk about monsters wanting to have stories or whatever, or at least just them having monsters to have its own story, which would have been cool, but... I made a mistake in that slip up there, and to my knowledge, I kind of like rushed the review in terms of the 3DS version just because at the time I just wasn't enjoying myself playing it, but it grew on me months later once I kept playing it on the 3DS itself. So originally you just need a new 3DS in order to play this game, but on Switch you're going to have no problem with performance. There's no pause button which was a huge minus to that, but it was originally said that because the memory leaks would just like happen occasionally because of this Unity engine, which it was supposed to come out earlier in the January, but due to him not being allowed to bring in the older engine, which he used the 2019 version, I believe that, which I believe that was the 2019 engine that he was talking about. And I hope I'm not wrong about that because I have heard numerous times about this stuff. But anyhow. That was the original 2019 Unity engine he was using to bring these games to life for both Switch, 3DS, and Wii U, of all things. But, because he wasn't allowed to use the engine for those systems, most of the games hadn't been delayed or cancelled in terms of that. And one of the games I was looking forward to playing was Rust Pass Guild, which unfortunately was said on Discord that it was cancelled because Unity broke the game. Well, what do you know? Anyhow, each different characters have their own strengths and weaknesses, and you can quickly upgrade them by completing missions. So after you complete missions and level up your characters, the more you level up, the more story you'll get out of these characters. Sometimes you can even unlock specific characters for them to join your party, meaning you've already unlocked them to begin with. So, not only get your original characters that you've previously played in terms of game, in terms of like how it's initiated. There's also some brand new ones you can unlock, which I'm sure they'll come in later on. You can go around completing these random missions they'll give you. Sometimes I feel like I waste my time completing these missions because sometimes they don't gain you XP at all, which is rather odd if you ask me. But some missions will give you great or okay XP. But what was funny is that there was an exploit in the game, which I'm not going to say, but I'm sure that's going to be fixed. But there's also like these weapons you can use in the game, like additional swords or 
or anything else like that. You can use those moose coins, or just money at least, that you can save up to use weapons for each different character. Sometimes they, they last one mission, or sometimes they could just last a few missions, but they have their own effects on there. It really depends if they're like powerful or not. So you can also use your, your block attack, which once you block, the enemy hits you, and you do this stuff with the whole sewer power stuff. And you also have your projectile attacks, which can come in handy if a bunch of enemies are in front of your face. So you go around, complete these missions, after that you can complete the stories, and then, well you know. There's still, there's still a lot to do in the game, but I, I don't think the game's gonna hold your hand for you. Sometimes I can get lost in certain levels, because I'm trying to find a, to, to like pop the balloon, or to lay up a, a torch. I felt like a minimap could have been helpful, but... Who knows, maybe they might make the engine much worse than it already was. If asking, there's no touchscreen functionality whatsoever, but you're just gonna have to take what you can get when it comes to the handheld version. But they both, on dock and handheld, play pretty good in terms of the frame rate and gameplay. So, anything that I've oh, probably mentioned in the previous version of this game have been all adjusted and fixed, including some weapon collision. Sometimes it still works, sometimes it doesn't, but it really depends. Sometimes enemies can be hard, sometimes you can't even tell when they're gonna attack, but some enemies have their own patterns, but other times it just come out random. But it's easy for you to know what you're getting yourself into. Sometimes you have to fight giant enemies or whatever. So for the human side, you fight zombified creatures or just monsters entirely, and as the creatures, you fight like normal animals that'll attack you, like goats and whatever too. But in terms of monsters, they're really not that much to unlock as of right now, but there was a giveaway on stream that unlock Toothpick, as that's what the monster's called. I'm not making this up. But some co-linker stuff will give you either human characters, or maybe they'll give you monsters for you guys to play around with. So while you're also attacking too, if you keep connecting combos, the more combos you keep going, the more power you increase. So meaning you have good ways to take out enemies, so to speak. So that means if you keep attacking them without missing, then you'll gain a huge advantage out of it. But sometimes when I hit the enemy and it doesn't register, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I had that same issue with the 3DS version. I still have somewhat half this in this version, but not much as I originally had in in the game itself when I originally played in 3DS, but I heard there is going to be a new update that will address very little issues, which I don't think they're major, but might be minor issues in terms of glitches. I'll also talk about more remasters of the series when it comes to Switch, like Undertakers, which is getting a brand new multiplayer mode. I'm also going to be talking about Gaiden for 3DS and Ruby River again, so hopefully when they come out, it'll be great for me to talk about again, because those two games are great to play on there, so if anyone hasn't played The Undertakers on either Wii or 3DS, then the Switch would be a great opportunity to see what you guys missed. Same with the 3DS game of Gaiden D 3D, you can say, because that's what it's really is, because there's two Gaiden games, so you really have to be more specific on Gaiden if you want to know which game you're looking for in terms of Gaiden, because there's a Wii U version, which was cancelled, but it's getting a Switch version. And there's Gaiden 3Ds, which is more of a... It's a RPG game, which I, which is why I've played, talked about, and you used a touchscreen, whatever, but it's making its way around here at some point. And we're also getting like Duck Season 2, so look forward to that one for both the Switch and the Nintendo DS. So, for me, I would get this game if I were you guys. And somehow, some way, big outlets like Nintendo Live is already talking about this game. And this is really good, because I feel like ever since the eShop closure of both the 3DS and the Wii U, this whole series is starting to strife in terms of audience. I mean, when when Sunken Studios was giving away some free codes for both Wii U and 3DS, which I think it was 3DS specifically, if I'm not mistaken, 
there was a buttload of people coming to this Discord, and when they couldn't get their code, they started blaming him of all people. Like it was his fault. No, people. You were exposing yourself as being greedy, as I want to say. But look, I, I, as soon as you guys see this game, and I think as soon as you... I think maybe if you heard about the game and you didn't get a chance to play this game, then, well, now it's on the eShop. It's around $20, which you can say, if I'm not mistaken, either it's the same price as the 3DS version, or it's like the, or similarly around there, but still. But like I mentioned, this is not only a remastered version of the game, but also an expanded version of the same game. So meaning, new content has been added into the game, which is something I was asking for, and it's been received. Again. You know, studios like this actually listen to their fans, unlike some companies, and that's a good thing. So, if you guys were thinking about wanting sequels or wanting to explore more Silver Falls games, then this will be just it for you. I mean, I now I would have already said this is the first game from the 3DS and Wii U library stuff to be remastered, but that would be me lying because Globusters of all things was the first one because it actually came to the Switch as of 2023. So this 2022 game actually would receive a remastered version. So, hey, if it's the best-selling game, then hey, you might as well remaster it, you know what I mean? But yeah. More Silver Falls videos will come in the future whenever they'll get released on the Switch, and I'll give you guys my deep dive in to my experience on most versions. So, I hope you enjoy Guardians and Metal Exterminators if you guys haven't already, but I do also think that this game will introduce younger audience to Tiger games. I mean, if they haven't already played them, then this is a good opportunity to show them what Tiger electronic games were. And I think in the most recent years, they started coming back, so you can look out for that. I mean, those Tiger stuff are like dirt cheap of all things. But yeah, if anyone hasn't heard about Tiger Electronic stuff, I think this is a game where you can jump in and learn all about these type of stuff. They can be fun, but sometimes not. But that really depends. But I think you'll like what the game has to offer. So it's like I was mentioning, it's like, this is more of a three games in one package deal. So, that's for all I can say about this. If you guys had problems with the 3DS version, well, this is a version that pretty much addresses all of the issues, well, most of the issues, I should say, in terms of, like, the game's frame rate and all of that other stuff. So, all I can say is I hope you guys enjoy this game as much as I now do in terms of playing it on the Switch, as it's more of a improved version over its 3DS counterpart.